In its early years, Israel faced a brutal enemy, the desert. Yet today, that same land grows food, forests, and even fish fueled by water recycled nine times over. But as Israel now faces escalating tensions with Iran, this isn't just history, it's strategy. Because in the age of geopolitical warfare, controlling water isn't just smart, it's strategic. While Iran flaunts missile and regional influence, Israel has quietly built an arsenal of water resilience, agricultural power, and energy independence, all in the desert. And that might give it the upper hand in the conflict. Imagine building a modern country in a place where water barely exists. That was the challenge Israel faced from the moment it was founded. With over half its territory covered by desert, rainfall was scarce and traditional water sources were limited or unreliable. Yet somehow Israel didn't just survive, it transformed its dry lands into thriving ecosystems and productive farmland. The key to this transformation wasn't luck, it was innovation born out of necessity. Israel had to invent its own solutions to a problem that could have crippled its development. From massive infrastructure to world-leading technology, the country approached water not as a resource to be consumed, but as one to be controlled, recycled, and multiplied. This isn't just a story about Israel. It's a blueprint for the future, a case study in how a water-scarce nation can beat the odds and turn an environmental disadvantage into global leadership. The Negev Desert covers over 60% of Israel's landmass, roughly 5,000 square miles of rocky terrain, sand dunes, and blistering heat. In the summer, temperatures soar to 122 degrees Fahrenheit, and in some areas, rainfall is almost non-existent. To the untrained eye, this region would seem uninhabitable. A wasteland, not a homeland. But the Negev isn't empty. It's home to over 200,000 people in cities like Be'er Sheva, and it's the centerpiece of Israel's environmental transformation. Turning such a harsh landscape into a livable, even productive zone took more than just resilience. It required rethinking everything about how water is sourced, delivered, and reused. For Israel, the Negev wasn't a barrier. It was a proving ground, a place to demonstrate that even in the most extreme climates, sustainable life is possible. And what they achieved here would go on to inspire nations worldwide. At first glance, Israel's decision to pump massive amounts of water into the Negev seems almost reckless. Why waste precious water in a place where evaporation happens almost instantly? Why fight nature so aggressively? The answer lies in strategy. Israel knew it couldn't afford to leave over half its land unusable. Developing the Negev wasn't just an agricultural gamble, it was a national necessity. And it paid off, with precise planning, controlled irrigation, and a multi-layered water system. Israel didn't just make the desert bloom, it made it economically vital. Water wasn't being wasted, it was being invested. Every drop sent to the Negev was part of a long-term plan to secure food, energy, and ecological resilience. What looked like madness was actually one of the most calculated national strategies in modern environmental history. Launched in 1964, the National Water Carrier is Israel's backbone and 80-mile system of pipes, channels, tunnels, and reservoirs designed to transport water from the Sea of Galilee to the parched south. With pumping stations capable of moving 449 million gallons daily, it was a feat of engineering that redefined national water distribution. But this wasn't just about moving water, it was about survival. The system linked disparate regions, ensuring that even the most remote desert towns could receive a steady supply. Over time, it was expanded and modernized, connecting to desalination plants and recycled water systems. Today, the national water carrier isn't just infrastructure. It's the physical embodiment of Israel's belief that access to water should never depend on geography. In a country with no margin for error, this system became a symbol of precision, planning, and perseverance. When droughts hit the Sea of Galilee, Israel didn't panic. It pivoted. Rather than depending solely on freshwater reservoirs, the country invested heavily in desalination, turning Mediterranean seawater into a steady, safe supply. Today, five major plants produce up to 39 billion gallons of water annually, making Israel a global leader in this technology. The flagship facility Sorek is among the world's most advanced. 
Through $250 million in infrastructure, its output is seamlessly integrated into the national network, allowing desalinated water to flow south into the Negev. This isn't just technological bragging, it's a solution built for resilience. While other countries argue about the feasibility of desalination, Israel has already made it routine. And in doing so, it's proven that even the most arid nations can overcome natural limitations if they're willing to innovate. Once a remote outpost surrounded by dunes, Be'er Sheva has become one of Israel's top 10 most populous cities, a thriving urban center in the middle of the Negev Desert. Its growth is a testament to what controlled water supply and visionary planning can achieve in even the harshest environments. The city is directly fed by the national water system and supported by secondary pipelines that reach deeper into the desert. That consistent flow of water made it possible to build infrastructure, grow food, and support a population of over 200,000 people, all in a place where camels and nomads once roamed freely. Beersheba isn't just a desert city. It's proof that Israel's water strategy doesn't just sustain, it builds. It turns the improbable into the undeniable and the unlivable into a modern hub of life, commerce, and science. In Israel, water isn't just delivered, it's tracked, conserved, and recovered. While some countries lose 20 to 70% of their water to leaks and inefficiencies, Israel's system loses just 3%. That's not a coincidence. It's the result of rigorous engineering and a cultural mindset that treats water as liquid gold. The entire national network operates with precision, from the desalination plants to the final faucets and desert farms. Water sensors, maintenance protocols, and advanced monitoring systems ensure that nearly every drop counts. Waste isn't tolerated, it's designed out of the system. This level of efficiency isn't just impressive, it's critical. In a country with limited natural water sources, minimizing loss is as important as maximizing supply. And in that arena, Israel has set a standard the rest of the world struggles to match. One of Israel's most transformative water strategies is also one of its most underappreciated, sewage recycling. Since the early 2000s, Israel has invested over $750 million in wastewater treatment, turning over 87% of its sewage into reusable water, the highest rate in the world. The Shafdan treatment plant near Tel Aviv alone processes 97 million gallons per day, much of which is pumped south to irrigate crops in the Negev. This isn't just resourceful, it's revolutionary. While the U.S. recycles less than 10% of its wastewater, Israel turned its sewage into a pillar of sustainability. By closing the water loop, Israel reduced its dependence on rain and reservoirs, transforming a liability into a renewable agricultural asset. It's the kind of solution that could reshape farming across arid regions worldwide, if others are willing to follow the example. A forest in the desert sounds like science fiction, unless you're in Israel. In the northern Negev, over 4 million trees now stretch across 11 square miles in what is known as the Yatir Forest, the largest human-planted forest in Israel. This green expanse isn't just for aesthetics. It was designed to halt desertification, trap carbon, and create a microclimate that conserves precious rainfall. Today, the forest blocks sand from spreading, shades the ground, and even contributes to global carbon offset studies, thanks to its inclusion in NASA's FluxNet Research Network. It's not without challenges. Climate change, droughts, and grazing animals threaten its longevity. But 60 years after it was planted, Yatir stands tall, a symbol of what happens when vision meets persistence in the harshest of places. Beyond trees and aesthetics, Yatir Forest serves as a living defense system against climate change. It reduces carbon in the atmosphere, slows erosion, and preserves moisture in an environment that desperately needs it. Its impact is both local and global. Studies show that Yatir absorbs as much carbon as forests in wetter climates, an astounding achievement considering its location. Its presence reduces the rate of water evaporation, helping rare rainfall linger just a bit longer, enough to make a difference for the surrounding ecosystem. The forest also feeds research and innovation. Institutions like the Arava Institute are studying crops and sustainable models that could be applied across drylands globally. Yatter isn't just stopping the desert, it's pushing back against global warming one tree at a time. 
How do you grow tomatoes, almonds, and even cotton? One of the thirstiest crops on earth in a desert? In Israel, it's not science fiction, it's daily life. Thanks to a complex blend of smart irrigation, recycled water, and soil management, farmers in the Negev produce yields that rival or surpass those of much greener nations. The numbers speak volumes. Israeli farmers average 300 tons of tomatoes per 2.4 acres, six times the global average. Citrus, melons, wheat, and chickpeas also thrive here, supported by high efficiency systems and near military precision and resource management. The Negev now contributes 40% of Israel's total agricultural output. In a land where nature once offered little, science, discipline, and vision created one of the most productive agricultural zones in the world. Yes, Israel raises fish in the middle of the desert, and not just any fish, but species like tilapia and baramundi. The secret lies underground, where remnants of ancient rainwater, now geothermally warmed and low in salt, provide the perfect conditions for aquaculture. These underground sources, located 50 to 100 feet below the surface, are tapped to create self-contained fish farms. But the innovation doesn't stop there. The nutrient-rich water from these systems is reused to irrigate crops, creating a closed-loop system where fish and plants support each other. In the Negev, farming isn't linear, it's circular. By integrating aquaculture with agriculture, Israel created a sustainable food web in one of the world's harshest environments. The result? Protein, produce, and profit, all from the desert floor. No single invention has reshaped Israeli agriculture like drip irrigation. Developed in the 1950s, this method delivers water directly to the root zones of plants in precise controlled doses. It's not just efficient, it's revolutionary. By minimizing water waste, preventing erosion, and reducing weed growth, drip irrigation allows farmers to grow more with less. And in a country where every drop counts, that efficiency is gold. While traditional irrigation floods the land, Drip systems operate like surgical tools, targeted, measured, and incredibly effective. This technology didn't just save Israel's farms, it changed global agriculture. Today, drip irrigation is used worldwide, especially in water-scarce regions. But its roots quite literally lie in the sands of the Negev. Water isn't the only resource Israel extracts from the desert. The Negev also fuels the country's energy future. With massive open spaces and constant sunlight, it's the perfect location for solar power plants, and Israel has built some of the world's most advanced. The Ashalem power plant near Be'er Sheva features three cutting-edge systems, including solar towers and parabolic troughs. Together, they generate 320 gigawatt hours annually, enough to power 120,000 homes. And unlike fossil fuels, this energy is clean, renewable, and desert-optimized. Energy and water are deeply connected, especially in agriculture. By generating power close to where it's needed, the Negev's solar facilities ensure that farms, desalination plants, and research centers stay productive and self-sufficient, even under the desert sun. David Ben-Gurion once declared that the Negev would be Israel's ultimate test, a place where the nation would prove its strength, creativity, and will to survive. Today, that vision has become more than a national achievement. It has become a strategic asset. In a time when Israel faces growing threats, especially from Iran, the Negev stands not as a vulnerability but as a fortress of self-reliance. What began as a dry, empty wasteland is now home to water recycling plants, solar fields, advanced agriculture, and military-relevant infrastructure. In the shadow of missiles and geopolitical pressure, Israel's ability to grow food generate energy and sustain life in the desert gives it something even more powerful than weapons, independence. While Iran invests in aggression, Israel has invested in resilience. The Negev is no longer just a desert, it's a silent weapon, engineered not for destruction, but for survival. And in the next great conflict, that may prove to be the most decisive force of all. So now you've seen how Israel turned a desert into a weapon of survival and possibly an advantage in a world on edge. But what do you think? Can innovation win wars before they begin? Drop your thoughts in the comments, cause I read everyone.
And if you want to see more stories where technology, survival, and strategy collide, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. The next chapter might just reshape how we see the world.